Here we are doing the highly manipulated form of agriculture in this environment of wildlands. It's, it's kind of a neat combination. You know, we're kind of like a market garden. We have 18 and a half acres, veggies, flowers. During those whole 80s period, the whole IPM movement started up, expanded the whole idea about pest control or the health of the farm environment. We're now trying to understand the role of birds on farms and whether they're eating the crops or eating the beneficial insects or eating the pest insects and providing us with benefits. When you have diversity in the farm or when you are embedded in landscapes that have more diversity surrounding it, you tend to have more of these beneficial birds. Tree swallows, the violet greens, and bluebirds, they're out here all the time. And uh, over the years, they've made this a place to come to. Well, I don't know how many years ago, it's been quite a while. Started off with seven boxes. I decided to make a few more. So I, I think we had about 20 at that point. After that, I, I made a few more. So I don't know how many we had, like 32 or something like that. Two of the most common species that we see using nest boxes in California are tree swallows, swallows in general, and then also the western bluebirds. And they forage through very different ways. When you have different species on farms doing different ways of going about eating their food, then you end up getting more benefits because they're eating different things. For the swallows, they eat food on the wing. They're aerial insectivores. They are definitely out there eating because every night you can see them going swooping around and they're feeding their this year whatever 70 offspring <laughs> on the other hand we have birds like western bluebirds which we would call more gleaners they would be birds that would be going around and picking out insects and eating them our main pests in the summer are flea beetles the tree swallows are definitely eating the flea beetles <laughs> when they're here they're very active swooping over plants that are victims <laughs> of the flea beetles. <laughs> the numbers do go down when the swallows are present, for sure, and they definitely go up when they leave. <laughs> there are a variety of ways that you can boost up bird diversity on your farm and then realize some of these pest control benefits that birds might be providing. You could put up perches for raptors to come on, or you could put up nest boxes you know, kind of neat to watch the, the whole uh, fledgling process and the, you know, the parents coming along, feeding them, diving into the hole and the young ones sticking their head out, <laughs> which is always fun to watch. So you could plant vegetation in the form of seeing hedgerows or flower strips. It could be having cover crops. If you have natural remnant vegetation, either embedded within your farm or most often kind of surrounding it. Maintaining that and conserving that is absolutely critical. Farmers are very concerned that birds could be bringing foodborne diseases like E. coli and salmonella onto the farm field. And while those pathogens are found in birds, they're very rare. And the species that actually tend to carry those pathogens more are more common on farms that have less habitat around them. They might have foodborne diseases occasionally. They might eat beneficial insects or more likely eat crops that you are concerned about. We want to look at the net impact of the bird on the farm. Actions that increase the diversity on the farm field by planting hedgerows, by maintaining habitat around farm fields, tend to make that net impact be more of a net benefit rather than a net cost. The whole thing about being observant, I mean, really observant, I think it's a valuable lesson. It's an, another small connection to something bigger. I mean, like in the Buddhist tradition, it's to do real work. It's a bigger context from which to look at things. Yeah, put up the boxes. <laughs> Doesn't hurt. <laughs>